Morning, sorry about that. Uh, my name is Horace. Uh, this is my first OSM event this year, so thank you all for having me. Um, this is a little bit of an impromptu thing that I, I put together, so I don't really have slides, but I wanted to share a, a little tool that I've been working on for doing ad hoc command line stuff um, with GIS uh, textual data. So I work at a company called Factual, and we make uh, POI data, and so you know we're constantly working with geospatial data, whether it's stuff in WKT or stuff in GeoJSON or GeoHashes and LatLongs and all this stuff. And I, you know, I realized over time, like basically I was spending my whole life copying and pasting stuff out of random GeoJSON files and like dumping it in some map UI. Um, and so we uh, started putting together kind of a, a tool to try to make this a little bit easier. Um, and the kind of constraints here were that, you know, um, uh, we, you know, I'm a software engineer and most of my work is already in sort of like a terminal Unix kind of command line context and so a tool that like worked in that environment was, was helpful, um, you know, it makes it easier to integrate with other tools. Um, something that works in sort of a streaming fashion, so like line wise, you know, bit by bit processing rather than having to like load all your stuff into to memory is nice. Um, something that has like fast startup, uh, you know, is nice for like an ad hoc kind of tool and um, something that can be used easily across multiple platforms, doesn't have a, a ton of complicated, uh, you know, C library dependencies that you have to set up to install and stuff like that. Um, and so this tool, uh, it's called GeoQ is the name of it. It's on GitHub, GitHub Waris slash GeoQ. Um, and uh, it is written in uh, Rust and you currently you'd install it with uh, a system called Cargo, which if, if you've ever used like NPM or Ruby Gems or something like that, this is like the package manager for for the, um, the Rust programming language, so you can install it with that. Um, and you know, basically what it does is it reads from standard end, so Unix style, you'd cat things into it. Uh, it can read stuff in lat long, like comma separated points, uh, GeoJSON, uh, WKT, and GeoHashes. And the kind of goal here was just something that's like really easy to use, so it's sort of a do what I mean, like figure it out. You just throw a, th you throw a GeoHash at it and it'll re recognize, you know, oh, that's a GeoHash, we know how to, handle that, it you know, knows how to uh, get GeoJSON and these kind of things. And uh, I was just gonna show you really quickly if I can a few things. So you know, one of the basic things we run into a lot is like I need to put a thing on a dang map. You know? And so um, we're in the command line here so we like to do it that way and so this integrates with um, GeoJSON IO which if, uh, is like I think a tool that came originally out of Mapbox so it's like a great web tool for just kind of like quick ad hoc visualization. Um, so I think this is a point here in Detroit, so you know, get that sucker lat long, comma separated. It can figure out the format and just throw it on a map. Uh, if you had a big file of like a gazillion of those, you could also put those on the map too. Uh, we work with geohashes a lot, uh, which is uh, a geohash is sort of a like spatial tiling uh, scheme. I don't know if people, people work with geohashes much, is that common? Uh, some, yeah. Um, so, you know, that has some utilities in there um, for, for doing that. So, you know, we have a point here and I can say, okay, give me the, the level five geohash at that point. Um, or again, if I want, like, keep piping them together, just more pipes, and we can throw that one on a map and say, okay, here's like the polygon for that geohash, which is pretty handy. Um, it has some, you know, more stuff. So I've got here, um, I've downloaded some of these uh, Microsoft uh, machine learning uh, building footprints. So if we look in this file here, the one from Michigan, this is just like lines, lines of GeoJSON, so one you know, polygon here per building or whatever. And, whoops, I copied the wrong thing. Uh, so you know, we can grab stuff like that, throw it on a map, um, and it's kind of hard to see because they're kind of not necessarily organized, but you know, we get a smattering of like polygons across, it looks like some portion of Michigan here. Uh, and so that's another thing. And then, you know, maybe more useful than that is like, okay, I'd like to actually see the ones that are, that are near me, you know? And so we have um, a little bit of basic like filtering stuff, nothing like super, super fancy in here. But if we use the uh, GeoQ filter subcommand, so I'm just gonna cat that Michigan GeoJSON file in here. We're gonna filter things that intersect our um, target geohash over here. And again, for intersection, it's the same kind of like formatting, figure it out. So you could throw a WKT or a GeoJSON or something like that in there. And uh, this will take a second because it's like a big file with 4.9 million polygons or whatever, but it's a good chance to say that, um, so this is, uh, it's like a parallelized thing. So you can see here, you know, we've got, it's murdering the four cores of my poor laptop right now to, to do all this. And then uh, you know we get out of that the polygons, the, the buildings that are in that geohash that I just filtered out or whatever and can again throw those on the map. 
Um, and so that's kind of most of that stuff. Uh, oh, well, the thing we deal with a lot is like geohash tiling. Let's see if this one works. Um, so I want to see, you know, for a given set of like polygons, what are all the geohashes at a given level? So in this case, let's say geohash level eight, what are the geohashes that like tile those um, polygons? And it can figure that one out. So, you know, run a little like covering tiling algorithm on these and, and then, you know, put those out on the map. Um, you know, and again, the, the kind of use case here is like these are all things that we run into a lot in our like productionized context. Like, I, if you want to throw GeoQ in your production thing, then like that's awesome, and let me know about it. But it's more of a case of like we would use this as kind of an ad hoc, quick and dirty way to visualize something that our like production system might be doing with JTS or with Geos or some other kind of like you know more lower level system. So kind of trying to like open the open open a window into it so you can see a little bit more easily what's going on. Um, so that's pretty much that. Oh, um, you know, we can run um, another kind of beautiful, nasty hack that it has is it can throw uh, the default way to like send data to GeoJSON IO is you encode it into the URL and like put it in a parameter and open it in the browser. Um, but there's like a max length on there. So this thing has kind of some, some nasty stuff it can do to actually open um, GeoJSON uh, data that's like larger than what that limit would normally allow. So here's like a whole bunch of stuff in Los Angeles that uh, is, to be honest, Mapbox does not love it. It kind of crawls a little bit, but it like it works, and you can kind of look at it and, and pan around. So it's nice to have um, a way to get around that limit. Uh, so that's pretty much that. Um, I would love to chat about it, or if you think this might be useful for you, or have feature requests or anything like that, um, please check it out. Let me know. In the future, maybe we're going to add more commands, more formats. Um, we don't really do anything with like shape files or KML or anything like that yet. Um, I think just to quickly say like what are some of the things it's not really trying to do? Obviously like something like QGIS or, or uh, GDAL, these like really sophisticated tools with like a gazillion fancy options. Like this is probably never going to replace something like that. But it, for things that are sort of quick and dirty and like having a really nice, clean, simple interface, um, we've we found that this is kind of a nice way to to tackle that. And you know on top of that, it's it's pretty fast. It's easy to install and um, pretty easy to use. So. That's it. Thank you, and uh, hope you would check it out. Mm.